We call this segment simply Capital Spotlight. Essentially, we put a spotlight on a member of the General Assembly and discuss some of the things they've been working on and how it might impact you, the Rhode Island citizen. And it gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome a woman that we've had the good fortune of interviewing in the past, the Honorable State Representative Deborah Falella. Rep, it's good to see you. Good to see you as well. Thank you again. And how are things uh, these days in Johnston? Things are good these days in Johnston, except uh, you've probably heard a little bit about the kneecap testing. Um, in Johnston, it's 49% of the students, 49% of the juniors did not make proficiency in math. Wow. Now, you know, I'll tell you something. I'm not real familiar with this whole kneecap yes. thing, and I know it's a standardized test that the kids have to pass in order to graduate. How did this all come about? How did this get started in the first place? This is a new requirement that uh, the uh, commissioner had had put on all the uh, cities and towns, all the high schools. Um, I, I work in Providence, so I do know a little bit about as well, Providence is also, I think, between 68 and 69 percent that weren't proficient in math. To me, it's a, a personal issue now because my daughter's a junior and um, she's in that category. She she missed it by seven points, uh, the proficiency in math, and she struggled, I have to say, in her 10th grade year with geometry. I had gotten her a tutor. I probably didn't get her a tutor quick enough in that mid-year. And then from there, um, she, she did fail the grade. She went through summer school and she passed geometry. So now she takes the kneecap testing and they say I think it's 30 percent of the test is geometry. Well, you know, I read a story online uh, with Projo about a young lady from Coventry who was an honor student, right. active in extracurricular yeah. activities. Oh, had, it was not a, a problem, a discipline no. problem or anything at no. school. Uh, a very fine young lady. Yeah. She missed the math portion by one point. Well, that's even worse, I think, because when it's one point like that, I think they have to show, they have to show growth, and I think they have to gain at least three points from what I can, what, I, what I've heard. But I know in her case as well, she's an honor student. She's on Big Brother, Big Sister. She's a social committee and float and all those things, and, and she's a good student. But what about the kids that like? didn't plan their schedules where they didn't even take geometry yet and they had that incorporated into the testing so where are they you know well I remember reading about this um, young lady in Coventry one of the things that the mother was concerned about is that she couldn't take the test again until so, January well, that's what's, yeah. and they're trying to make college applications right? and this type of thing stands in the way of that it really does because it, it it gives them like I could see her face I mean it was like a you know kick in the stomach now they're you know this is the time of the year they start looking at at colleges maybe thinking where to go and now like you've got this block in front of you and then now you're gonna wait so long before you can take it again and then if you don't pass that then they give you another opportunity I believe one more time and then from my understanding is that if you don't pass that there's a, another whole process with appeals but let's face it how, how how's that gonna take well I'll tell you what it sounds very cumbersome and not only that but I'm a little sensitive to these standardized testing we're not all alike, right. and uh, some people uh, are not good test no, takers. That's true. Some are. You, you know, people have knowledge; they're proficient, but when it comes time to take a test, they have a difficult time. I remember talking to a psychologist a few years ago. There's actually something known as test phobia, that's true. where young that's people true. actually get frightened that's true. and very uncomfortable when they're taking tests, so they're not going to perform well. No, and now with all this pressure and all this. Can you imagine what these kids, you know, I mean, I know like in Johnston, for an example, they're going to do like some ramp up in the summer, a uh, little ramp up program, and then early on in the beginning of their senior year. But I just feel bad because I think a lot of the kids felt like, you know, it's like a little bit of a, a letdown. I know she's she was very let down, and I know a lot of her friends were in that same category. Well, that young lady that I read about in Coventry was very, very disappointed, and I could certainly understand that. So as a member of the House of Representatives, what can you do well, about I, this? I'm standing behind Eileen Norton has a bill in committee now, and I'm standing behind that, and, and, and I'm trying to gain support by talking to other members. And I'm, I'm a matter of fact, uh, Representative Norton and I have a meeting tomorrow with Mayor Policina in town just to let them be aware of where our, where our kids stand with 49% of them not proficient in math. And, and by the way, I had the good fortune of uh, 
know of knowing your daughter. She's oh, yes. uh, she's been a page here That's right. in the uh, House of Representatives. So I not only wish her well, uh, you well, and your colleagues in the House. I think you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents. I've gotten a lot of feedback from parents who are concerned about this. Rep. Valello, thank you for talking thank to us. Thank you very much, Dave. It's always a pleasure uh, having these uh, members of the General Assembly here. But we couldn't do it without you. My name is Dave Barber. We call this segment Capital Spotlight.